Okay, everyone, why don't we get started? Um, so, my name is Glenn Weil, uh, and you guys can call me uh, Glenn, you can call me Professor Weil, you can call me Broccolini, which is a nickname I sometimes go by, or any other nickname you want to call me. Um, Um, so, in this class, we'll try our best to respect ideas rather than titles, and I hope you guys will aim to be my colleagues and, uh, you know, rather than just my students. If I mess up on something, if I make a mistake, I hope you'll raise your hand and correct me, or even if you just disagree with something I say, I hope we can start a debate. I want this to be an interactive and engaged class. Um, this is Elements of Economic Analysis 2, uh, also Econ 201. Um, it's the second quarter of Intermediate Micro, and it pre requires Econ 200, as well as the Euro Calculus, which we will use. And the course is going to cover uh, the behavior of competitive and monopolistic firms, um, market equilibrium and uh, externalities, as well as the applications of these ideas to a number of policy areas, including regulation, competition policy, and public policies like the redistribution of wealth and the provision of uh, public services. The main goal of the course is going to be to give you a sense for what it's like to be an economist. Um, and this, what you're sitting in is the turbo section, which is a bit like honors, and I'll talk a little bit more about the distinction between the two sections soon. So in this first lecture, I'm going to um, do three things. First, basically talk through some of the logistics of the course. Second, I'll um, discuss the readings that you had to do for the class today. And finally, uh, I'll give you a bit of an outline of what we're going to cover in the course. So the course is going to uh, basically aim to do two things. First, to give you a flavor of what it's like to be an economist. In particular, what sort of questions do economists think about or have to think about for their work? Um, how do economists approach these questions uh, in a distinctive manner and give distinctive answers to the questions? And how can you, uh, in you know, your future career, use economics to help you think about the solutions to various uh, social problems? Um, and second, we're going to try to I'm going to try to teach some of the tools that you'll need in order to be an effective, uh, practical economist and to prepare you for your future courses. Um, this course, I think, may be a bit different than some previous economics courses that you've taken. In particular, starting today, I'm going to be cold calling on people both to make sure that they've done the reading, but also um, to uh, try to see where people are, how they're understanding, uh, what's going on, and so forth. Um, second, rather than everything just being sort of uh, spewed at you by me, uh, I'm going to sort of force you guys to learn some of the concepts actually through the problem sets. So not, the problem sets are not just going to be rote mathematical exercises solving some Lagrangian or something, which you might be used to in, in economics courses. Instead, they're going to actually ask you, you'll, you'll definitely have to do uh, some mathematical exercises, but a main goal will be to get you to actually sort of discover economic concepts through the uh, problem sets. Um, as a result, the problem sets are going to be more open-ended and probably harder than the problem sets you, you're used to, and they'll account for 40% of the grade. Um, the problem sets are probably going to be more than you're going to be able to do in uh, a reasonable amount of time. So please do not just spend an infinite amount of time on the problem sets, which may be possible. Instead, you know, spend some reasonable length of time that you're used to spending on a problem set, maybe four to eight hours a week. Um, and you know, if you don't get it done, don't freak out. Everything is going to be cur curved in the class. Scores will almost certainly be lower on exams and problem sets than you're used to, but this does not mean the distribution of grades will be lower. It'll probably actually be higher. So please don't worry about that. Um, I want you to come to office hours, and so do the TAs. The TA is actually not here right now, but uh, when he comes in, I will uh, introduce you to him. And so I, I really hope you'll come. Again, I really want people to be engaged with this course and take away from it sort of a love for economics if at all possible. Um, and the course, I think, as a result, will be most useful for people who plan to use economics in their careers afterwards. But of course, you know, uh, people follow many paths and have an interest in economics for many reasons. Okay, so um, the course has two sections. Um, both meet on Tuesday and Thursday. 
Uh, the turbo section is the one that you're sitting in right now from 9 to 10.20. The regular section meets from 10.30 to 11.50. Uh, lectures are going to be quite similar, so if you have to miss one, you can attend the other. But the turbo lecture is going to differ in a few ways. So one way is it's going to have more challenging and more reading. And um, it will use a bit more abstract mathematics and spend less time going through the computational details of solving you know, partic for particular you know, functional forms and you know, algebra. And we'll focus more on sort of the broad concepts and use abstract mathematics to deal with those a little bit more. Um, it's not going to be nearly as mathematically intensive as Sebastian Gay's Monday section. And so, um, and that's also a turbo section, so I would suggest that all of you consider shopping Sebastian's section as well. Uh, if your inclination is to a more mathematical, less applied treatment, this course and his course I think will be equally challenging. This might be even a bit more challenging, but it's going to be challenging in a different way than this course will be. Um, he'll also provide a bit different topic in terms of coverage. So he'll provide a much better coverage of game theory and general equilibrium theory. Uh, and I'm going to provide a better coverage of a variety of policy issues. Uh, which economists try to analyze. Um, the lectures uh, in Turbo will go a bit more quickly and will cover the material in greater generality rather than sort of going over the same thing uh, multiple times, basically. Um, they'll also require a wider range of skills. So not just maybe the things you're used to in economics, sort of problem solving and some basics of economic intuition, but also the ability to read and think in sort of a broad-minded, humanistic, even somewhat philosophical uh, manner. Um, the, um, the class will be a bit more geared towards people who are interested in doing research in economics eventually in their upper class years. And, uh, but it, it will have exactly the same evaluations and curve as the regular section. So you will not be disadvantaged in any way for being in this class. There are problems which it says, you know, everyone in Turbo should do. They get a star on the problem set and so forth. But that doesn't mean that you will be penalized relative to someone in regular if you don't do those questions. It's just that I would strongly encourage you to do them because the readings you will have done will prepare you well for them. And it would sort of be a waste not to do them. But everything will be curved uh, to the exact same standard. So the only disadvantage you suffer from being in Turbo is that, you know, you have to sit through this lecture because I'll cold call on you. And you'll have to, um, uh, yeah, I mean, basically the only, and, and you have to do the readings associated with those lectures. But, but the gradings are all going to be the same. So one uh, advantage, though, given how full this class is getting, um, I'm not sure how much this is an advantage anymore, is that in principle, the turbo section should be smaller. Um, and so you should get more attention. But I should actually warn you, that at this point, uh, the numbers in this class are rapidly rising. And I think there's a good chance this class is going to be full as well very soon. So if you're, in, if you're not already signed up for this class and you want to be in it, I would strongly recommend that you do that uh, sooner rather than later. Um, from here on out, I'm going to assume that all of you are uh, students in, in Turbo. Okay. So uh, let me start with some practical information. So the course website is um, on chalk. Uh, hopefully you've all found it. If you have any trouble finding it, let me know. Um, and all the readings are on that chalk site. Uh, the non-gated material, not everything other than the problem sets and the readings, which have to stay within Chicago, are also available on my personal website, which the address of is there. Um, the required readings and uh, are in the syllabus. And also for each set of required readings, there's a set of uh, sort of additional references, which can help you learn the material deeper. There's, um, and you should complete all of the required readings before coming to the class, because you will be responsible for them, and I will uh, hold call. Um, there's also, for people who are interested in digging deeper in a variety of different ways related to the topic, there's a list of enrichment readings, uh, which go in many different directions. Some of them explore the mathematical basis of the thing, some explore the, sort of the humanistic and philosophical side, some of the current events implications, etc. Um, so, so take a look at those if you're interested. Um, the textbook for the class is Intermediate Microeconomics by Hal Varian, 8th edition. 
And there's an optional text which we'll use uh, in a few places, Economic Theory by Gary Becker. Um, all other readings are on the website, uh, and you can just download them off of there. Uh, some of the references, not the required readings, but the references, are just going to be in reserve in the library rather than both, you know, photocopied and put up on the website. Um, you can reach me at while at uchicago.edu and, and at this phone number. My office hours are Wednesday 4 to 6 at Rosenwald 205B, which is my office. Um, if you want to, yeah? Uh, how much different is the 8th edition and the 7th edition? Uh, if I were you, what I would do if you have the 7th edition or something like that, go through the sections and make sure that he covers the same material. I would be amazed if he doesn't. So I, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, we're not going to be very slavish to Varian here. The relationship between Varian and the lectures is going to be relatively close, but not that close. So I, I will, you know, if you really don't want to use Varian, get another textbook and make sure it covers the right material, basically. Um, so uh, if you can't make my office hours, we'll find another time. Just email me. And uh, if you want, if there's like a specific block of time that you want like to make sure that you have exclusively with me during office hours, you can email my secretary, Stephanie Hammond, shammond at uchicago.edu. Um, Stefano uh, Moso, who's not here actually, uh, is the uh, TF for this class. Um, and he, the section is going to be 4 to 5 p.m. in this room. Uh, and his office hours will be 2 to 3 on Wednesdays in the Harris School, uh, room 234. Um, so the requirements for the class are going to be six problem sets, which will account for 40% of your grade, uh, a midterm, which will account for 20%, and a final, which will account for 30%. The midterm will be 4.30 to 6 p.m. on Tuesday, November 1st, in the Social Science uh, Center, room 122. Um, you absolutely have to come to this midterm. It is a requirement for the course. So if you cannot make it, you have to tell us like absolutely as soon as possible. So make sure you can come. The final will be scheduled uh, by the administration as usual in the last three hours. The all, all exams are going to be open everything, open book, open note, open anything you want to bring in to help you, including the internet, uh, including Mathematica, and anything you want. You can't do any two-way me messaging. Uh, and we will be walking around to make sure people are not doing messaging. But other than that, you know, use whatever you want on the exams. Um, Does, do you mean the midterm also? Yes, both. Both will be open everything. Um, please do, though, bring a calculator and Mathematica, and or Mathematica on your computer uh, to help you do computations on the exam. Um, all problem sets will be due, due at the beginning of the lecture to which they are associated, and that's all indicated on the syllabus. The first three problem sets are already available on the website, and the first one is due a week from Thursday. Charging stop. Uh, problem sets uh, and exams are going to be long, and they're going to be hard, as I indicated. You are not expected to complete everything. Uh, everything will be extensively discussed in section and it will be curved commonly for the two lectures. So do not uh, freak out about that. Um, you, you, will, you can really only, unless you don't learn the material as well as a result of being in turbo, you can really only benefit from being in turbo because you'll learn more material that will allow you to do better on this examination. Yeah? Are the two problem sets going to be the same for the books? Both They're exactly the same. Each problem set will have three classes of problems or sort of sub-problems. Ones that sort of everyone should try to do, ones that will be easier for people who have taken the turbo and done the turbo reading to do, and then a third class of problems which will be uh, sort of very difficult or challenging for anybody. Uh, so there's sort of extra credit for anyone. And everything will be curved to the same standard. So you, you know, if you do the pro turbo problems as well as the regular problems, you can only do better, basically. Uh, yeah? Oh, will the exams be similar? The exams are going to be exactly the same, and they'll be similar in the sense that, though there won't be explicit indications, there will be problems that will be easier for people who've taken the turbo to do. Uh, so everything will be curved to the same. You really cannot lose by being in the turbo section, except if you don't win.